Hi everyone, this is William. Today, I'll be talking about acne, how it is caused, its symptoms, what to expect if you do have acne, and treatments and preventions. Let's get started and right to the point with one essential question. What do you think of if you hear the word acne? Some people may think acne causes lots of pimples, red bumps on your foreheads, just like what I have right now. Others might think, ugh, yellow icky pus, get me away from acne. There are a lot of misconceptions about acne that I will clear up today in the name of science. Let's get started on what acne is and how it's caused. The root cause of acne is called sebum. Sebum is an oily, waxy, yellowish substance that is naturally produced by our skin cells. Everywhere on our bodies, our skin cells are producing sebum. Normally, sebum is an insulator and also a protector that can trap bacteria in its path. However, if there is too much of sebum, sebum can start to harden. Now, mind you, on my hand here, there are thousands of little hair follicles. Hair follicles are the little holes where hair grows out of. Underneath my skin, right next to these hair follicles, there are tiny sebaceous glands, and these are what secrete sebum. If there's too much sebum being secreted from those glands, the sebum quickly clots up the hair follicle, leaving there to be an inflamed site. Now, some of you might have a question. Why do teenagers especially have acne? This is because, one, our facial cells, skin cells, secrete the most acne out of all of the other body cells. Two, during puberty, teens have hormonal imbalances, which causes facial skin cells to secrete an abnormally large amount of sebum. Because of this, teenagers will frequently experience some of the symptoms I will be talking about right now. Because of these hormonal imbalances, teenagers will frequently be dealing with pimples, blackheads, whiteheads, everything that we will be talking about in our next part. What can you expect of acne if you do have it? We will be going over three main symptoms today, and these happen to be the symptoms that people struggle the most with. The first is a blackhead. Remember I was detailing how your skin cells can secrete a lot of sebum? When your skin pore is open, that means that when the sebum builds up, it is quickly going to get oxidized. Here's another question for you. If you leave an apple out in the air with no cover, and it's a sliced apple, what will happen to it? Visit it after a few hours, and you have, will have noticed that the apple's color have, will have turned brownish instead of its usual whitish, yellowish color. This is because of oxidation, oxygen's reactions to specific chemicals like the ones in apples and the ones in sebum. That's why if you've ever seen a blackhead, the sebum will turn black. Let's move on to the whitehead. The whitehead is a close relative of the blackhead. The only difference is that in whiteheads, there's a flap of skin covering the site where the sebum is building up, allowing the sebum to take on its true color. Arguably the most yucky, defamatory, ugly symptom of all of acne. Pimples. 
there's a specific type of little bacteria that I'd like to show all of you guys. P. acnes. You might not be thinking much about P. acnes as you see it, but P. acnes is all over our skin. They live in our skin microbiomes. Now, if you weren't aware, on our skin there are thousands of tiny microorganisms, whether it be harmful viruses to helpful bacteria. I want to show you this very common skin bacteria called P. acnes. You might not think much about P. acnes as you see it, but P. acnes is all over our skin. In normal conditions, P. acnes is a helpful bacteria, unlike Staphylococcus aureus, which can cause brutal skin infections. P. acnes, however, does like to infect clogged skin pores. So that means when your dirty fingers reach up to touch your face, you might have a second thought about touching your face because now you know that P. acnes, once it gets onto those clogged pores, likes to infect them and turn them into pus-filled pimples. Let's move on to treatments and preventions. First, treatments. Remember, if you do have acne, do not despair as there are support groups out there for you and there are a multitude of different ways that you can treat or prevent acne. Let's go over a few common treatments of acne. I have grouped them into two main categories, self-care products and prescribed medications. Self-care products include benzoyl peroxide, which is a very useful cream that's usually found in skin lotions and skin cleansers. Benzoyl peroxide is a chemical that not only helps you get rid of inflammatory acne, it also kills P. acnes. So it's a two-in-one medication that you can buy over the counter. We also have antibacterial soaps. You should probably have one or two cans of these lying around in your home. Remember, the antibacterial soaps can help you wash your face often as to treat acne. Now, if your acne is just too bad for these self-care products, you, you might want to visit a dermatologist. He or she will probably prescribe you with either antibiotics or vitamin A derivatives. Antibiotics will kill P. acne's germs so that they have no chance to infect those clogged pores. And vitamin A derivatives helps unclog your clogged pores. So those are two major medicines that are very helpful to acne patients. What if you just don't want acne to happen to you? Well, most people have acne. Don't worry about it. But if you're really that adamant about not getting acne at all, here's a few strategies that I'd like to present to you. First, do not touch your face. Why shouldn't you touch your face? Remember what I was saying? On the surface of your hand skin cells, there are thousands of little P. acnes bacteria. If you are touching your face, you're providing them a free ride onto your face where they can start infestations in those clogged pores. Washing your hands also helps a lot because if you do need to touch your face, be sure that your hands are clean before doing so. And finally, eating healthy and exercising can help. If you eat foods too rich in oil or fat, it increases the chance where the sebum that your cells are creating becomes too excessive. I'd like to state one more time the crucial importance of not feeling depressed when you do have acne. Many of us struggle along with you. And as I have talked about before, acne is just a small skin disease that we as teenagers need to experience and drive through. Ultimately, we will drive through and overcome the storm. 
if you are, as I said, adamant about your acne conditions, there are always preventions and treatments. Thank you.